Okay, last question. And I think this is a great one to end on um, because my mind hurts, but also yes. because this personalizes everything that we've talked about. Here's the, the next question, last question. Do we have free will or is everything that happens predestined to happen by God? Let's start, I'm g- I'll give you a biblical example. I'll give you a, a, a disciple example from the life of Jesus. But let's start with logic. Let's just start here with logic. Love can only exist when there's a choice. Yeah. Great example. Um, when, when my girls were real little, they had plenty of dolls that like if you pull the string on the back, it would say something, right? So like if I, if I grabbed one of those little dolls and I pulled the string and the doll looking me in the eyes said, I love you, I would receive zero gratification from that because it is programmed and robotic and there is no choice. Yeah. So it's not love. It's just some words coming out of a programmed robotic doll, right? Yeah. So God knew that for Adam and Eve and the rest of humanity to actually love him, there had to be a choice. So in the Garden of Eden, God presented Adam and Eve with a choice. He said, there's one rule in this garden. Don't eat from this tree. You can eat from all the rest. Don't eat from this one. Take care of the animals. Take care of the garden that I've planted for you. Adam and Eve had one rule and they broke the one rule. They chose instead of following what God told them to do, they did what looked desirable and good. And so they chose that because they're not robots. They have free will. And because we've all as the human race descended from Adam and Eve, we now all have a a choice, right? So I think the big question here is about God's sovereignty versus man's responsibility. That's really like what's, what's in play here, what's to debate. And I, I just wanna, I wanna help you see that the, I don't believe that the Bible teaches either or, the Bible teaches both and. Mm-hmm. It, they, go, they actually go hand in hand. I'll just give you one quick example. Philippians chapter two, Paul is writing to the Philippian Christians and he says in Philippians two verse 12, he says, therefore my beloved, as you've always obeyed, So now, not only as much in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And then he goes in the very next verse, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Right there in two verses is man's responsibility. He talks in verse 12 about obedience and working out our own salvation. And the very next verse, God's sovereignty. It is God who is working in us to will and to do for his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. So great example of that is Judas. You know, one question that came in um, was about like, was Judas doomed by scripture to betray Christ or did he he have a a choice? And um, simple answer to that would be that scripture foretold the betrayal, but Judas made the choice. So is Judas responsible? Yes. Is God sovereign? Yes. Is scripture prophetic? Yes. These are not competing doctrines. These actually go hand in hand. Yeah. So yes, we all have a choice. And I think this is why it's so important to end on this because we need to personalize everything that we've just said. We've talked about so many deep things, the rapture and the millennium, and the second coming of Christ and hell and heaven and judgment and eschatology and all of this stuff. We need to just bring all of that back and say all of us today have a choice to make.